Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It Don. Alright, so uh, Pascal here wanted to talk to us. Ah, uh, hello, Brondon. First of all, let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station. I'm sure you'll love it here. It's good that you came. I actually want to talk to you about some of the results from those tests we did earlier. Alright, what exactly? You see, test results show that you have certain amounts of psionic potential. How much potential? I'm not exactly sure until I run some more DNA tests, but it's there. Okay, let me just tell you a bit about the psionic potential first. It's a relatively rare inheritable complex genetic trait that triggers development of certain otherwise latent components in the brain. It allows a person to perform some subtle psionic invocations, such as influencing the minds of others, as well as some not so subtle ones, such as causing radical temperature changes and telekinetic manipulations. Right, and how did this genetic trait come to be? No one is really sure. Research indicates that it's a relatively recent genetic mutation, but it sure could not have been a random one. So many things about it are just too complex and convenient to be anything but artificially designed. There are problems with this theory though. Former BioCore's head of genetic research, Hal Roche, outlines these problems best in his thesis. I won't bore you with the details, but the essence of the problem is that, with the technology that we currently have at our disposal, Creating, testing, and integrating such complex genetic structures is simply not possible without a colossal amount of trial and error work. So much trial and error work, Roche argued, that even if you combined all the genetic processors in the world in his time and let them work on the subject for the entire time of their existence, they would still be extremely unlikely to produce these results. Furthermore, Roche points out that the areas of the brain where the sonic activity takes place were never even properly charted, let alone genetically decoded. So you see, it's a bit of a mystery. We know more about how to make it work than how it actually works. Uh, interesting. Enough, <laughs> you could have just said you didn't know. Interesting. Indeed it is. Anyway, is there something else you wanted to know? Uh, so how do I realize this potential? You must first disable your, your psionic inhibitor. It's a neural structure in your brain that prevents you from accessing your psionic projection centers. We assume it was designed to prevent the infants from unwittingly harming themselves or those around them. There are ways to do this by extended meditation, but this can take years. We have more efficient methods nowadays. He reaches into his pocket and takes out a large red pill. This pill will take care of the inhibitor right away, but there is one side effect I am obliged to mention. The majority of users experience immediate and significant weakening of their immune system. When I say majority, I mean everyone. To put it bluntly, it will severely affect your health. Therefore, the choice is yours. Is the process painful or dangerous? No, no, not at all. Well, maybe a bit dangerous, but it's not painful at all. Much. You might get a bit woozy, but that's it. Uh, do I need to prepare somehow? No, just go ahead and swallow it. Uh, forget it, Doc. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. He sighs. It's your time to waste. I can't help you with that, though. I'm a doctor, not a monk. Come to me if you change your mind. Yeah, I'm not going to take that pill. If it affects my health, I need my constitution. For my build. Alright, um, who else needed to see me? Oh yeah, uh, someone in the comment section had asked if I could show off the uh, out of combat movement speed up. It's down here to the bottom left of the screen. Slow down and speed up. You can do it up to five times. And voila. I'm going to keep it uh, nice and slow. Oh yeah, I need to check out well, my notes, or check out my notes. Um, engineering level, uh, let me go back up to the platform and barracks. I also need to go to the armory. Because I thought, I know where I need to go. Let's see, where does this take me? Do a little quick save before I, uh...
Okay. I'd probably safely assume this isn't the barracks. Let's get out of there. Oh, it takes me to the other side. Neat. Where does this take me then? Probably nowhere good. I need to. Nothing on this side worth checking out. Where does this go? Again, probably know we're good. I probably shouldn't be exploring like this without uh, going to the armory first. Well, there's an auto turret down here. Maybe I'll be okay. Harland? Oh, that's the guy I'm supposed to talk to. Okay. Hawker, take that. I'll come back down here because he's part of the uh, quest that I currently have. So let's just talk to him because I think he's the one that knows um, the underground area I need to go to. Oh, what's the actual quest description? Oop, wrong thing. Or maybe it's Harold. I remember, uh, I thought he said Harland. What's up, Roman? Let's talk to Roman real quick since we're here. Hi, you must be Bron Don. Name's Roman. I'm in charge of this barricade. Wish I had time to chat, but I'm quite busy right now. Uh, have you made any progress in clearing the tunnel? Not much so far. We have to dig deep enough to safely plant the explosives, otherwise we risk damaging the tunnel even more. Uh, how much damage did the earthquake do? We're not sure. Might be that the tunnel just caved in a couple of places. I've sent parties to the tunnel's side entrances to investigate. We'll know more when they return. Oh, will we? Let's go talk to Bison. A lean athletic face... Lean athletic face. A lean athletic man faces you and greets you with a friendly, resonant voice. Hello, friend. I don't believe we've met. Name's Bison. Uh, well met, Bison. I'm Bron Don. I love to chat more, but as you can see, we're all a bit too busy right now. Is there something you need? Uh, what are you doing? I'm helping me clearing the tunnel by using telekinetic manipulation. Exhilarating. Alright. Alright, let's go down to the armory and get the, uh, my equipment. I might speed it up a little bit. I don't think it directly affects gameplay in any way, so, um, yeah, armory and shooting range. So I do talk to Gorski. Lucas. 
Assuming it's all stealing, yeah. A short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a thud, raising your eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn into a smile. He removes his glove and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong grip before addressing you. Don't worry. Brondon, I ain't gonna blow us up. Nope. Anyway, Vensel told me you'll be staying with us for a while. Yeah, I guess so. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Uh, can I have my weapon back? Of course, it was the, um, yeah, 5 mil pistol and some ammo, if I recall correctly. Right? This one? He produ produces a pistol that is in such bad condition, people would pay to get rid of it. Ha <laughs> uh, It wasn't a gun at all, it was a machete. What? One of his eyes half closes while the other one tenses up. No, seriously. Is this your pistol? Five mil. I came here with a forty-four, man. Uh, pistol. I had a bloody shotgun. Yeah, no, these are gonna work. I don't have any points into, uh, persuasion. Yeah, guns are for wussies. All I need is a knife. Um... Yeah, let's grab a crossbow. Actually, no, I had a crossbow. Then who's... Oh, this has got to be Newton's gun. My bad. Here you go. He hands you your weapon. There. With that out of the way, might interest you in a couple more things? Hmm? Yeah, let's trade. Hmm. Shock steel sledgehammer. That's only 12,492. I th guess I should equip some of the stuff that I have. Let's do that real quick before I forget. There's Gorski. The tall, imposing figure of this battle scarred veteran towers before you. You met Gorski before. He's one of the counselors that interviewed you when you first arrived. So you passed all of Tanner's little tests and exercises. That could not have been easy, but don't think you're some kind of hotshot now. You're yet to deserve the privilege you've been given. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. We'll see. So, why are you here? I'm here for some target practice. Go ahead then. Yeah, but how do these consoles work? Gorski's eyes gradually move across the range, crowned by a constantly intensifying frown. He is alone with you. I guess I'll have to do it. Alright, look here. It's simple. You use the console to set the target distance, right? Then you start a session. The session will track your hits and misses automatically, so you can check your progress while you shoot. When you've had enough, end the session. Uh, what distance do I set? Well, it depends on the weapon now, doesn't it? If you've got a rifle, you can set it to max. Otherwise, try 8 yards. Experiment a little. Okay. Oh, let's do this one. Pick your target. Okay, I mean, it's okay. I know how to shoot, so... I should probably end the session, right? Can't go that way. Alright, let's get out of here, then. Alright, uh, let's see. Have we done commons and cantinas already? I think that's where we met, um... I don't think this guy wanted to talk until I finished delivering the package. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Administration and library? I'm gonna explore everything before we go out and do the mission, in case there's any quests in here.
unlocked. So the castles are out again, but I think Ezra is working on that. You met Vera previously during your testing period. She's one of the counselors here at the Southgate Station. Good to see you found your way to my office, Don Bron Don. How do you like your new home so far? Uh, it's pretty good. I can see myself staying here for a long time. People keep sending me oh, to solo dangerous missions. It's derailed. Uh, so anyway, oh, that's good to hear. So anyway, how can I help you? Uh, what can you tell me about Core City? It's a city to the north that spans both levels of Underrail. It serves as a gateway to both the Upper Underrail and the United Stations territories to the north. The city used to be controlled by the BioCore security forces, but they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed by a couple of years of street wars between these factions. The fighting ceased eventually in light of outside threats and serious infrastructural problems, and nowadays the three surviving factions rule the city together with their appointed mayors. Uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, United Stations? Certainly. United Stations, also called Union by some, is a confederacy of stations in North and Central Underrail. It's an attempt to unify this entirety of Underrail so that we could all work together towards a better future for the human race. Similar to our station, the Union is ruled by a council of five, most stations of the Union have some degree of uh, autonomy as well. The United Stations are constantly expanding, and while no stations here in the South are yet to become a part of it, are to become part of it, something like that will surely happen in the near future. Now I want to learn about the Protectorate. The Underrail Protectorate is a military organization that protects the United Stations from external and internal threats. It predates the Union itself, and it, it also played a crucial role in its creation. The Protectorate is under the command of General Melek, who is widely considered to be the most powerful man in Underrail. He holds a special place on the United Stations Council of Five, and some also believe him to be the de facto ruler of it. Are there any plans for SGS to join the United Stations at some point? Our citizens and our counselors are divided on that matter. We currently have good trading relations with the Union, and I personally think it would be a good idea to be among the first to join it here in the South. We are arguably the most powerful faction in these parts, so we could position ourselves advantageously in their organization and also retain a high degree of independence. This would also ensure we avoid any potential military conflict in the future should the Protectorate decide to move against some of the less civilized communities in the neighborhood. But as I said, not everyone agrees with me here. You must understand that many of our current citizens come from organizations that have, for various reasons, been Protectorate's targets in the past, so, they're not, so they are not very keen on being buddies with their old enemies. But let me ask you what your, what is your opinion on the matter? Would you like to see your station become a member of the United Stations? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Well, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm reserving judgment until I learn more about all this. You're a wise man. I hope that, like me, your future dealings with the United Stations will encourage you to support their efforts. I mean, I like the idea of everyone being united and working towards the same goal, but I don't know the truth behind the United Stations or anything yet, so I want to avoid that for now. I think we've already gone to medical and psionics, right? Just double checking before we continue. Yeah. Agron Ag Agronomy and pens. Let's check that out. I'll also take care of the mushrooms in the room over there. That is off limits, by the way. Hi, what's up, Quentin? You come up to a rangy man with long hair who is cutting open the head of a large, monstrous creature, formerly an untamable beast. It is now but a stiff volunteer to post-mortem dissection, to science. And soon enough, the man makes the final incision. 
after which he pushes his hand through to extract a single long, sharp spine. Greenish, sticky fluid dribbles out of the opening, and all over the floor as the man wipes the spine clean before laying it aside. That is the moment in which he notices you. Careful, you don't want to get in contact with its toxin. He returns to cutting through the creature as he talks to you. My name is Quentin. Don't bother introducing yourself. I know who you are. You're Bron Don, and you just got admitted to the station. I'd shake your hand, but you can see why that wouldn't be a good idea. What kind of creature is that? It is a burrower. It's one nasty creature that digs around, laying eggs all over the place. There are more numerous deeper underground, but you can find a still you can still find a few roaming the lower underrail and in the surrounding caves. If you meet one, be careful. It'll spit thick, hard spines at you that are coated with poison. Hey, what are you doing hey, what are you doing exactly? I'm collecting its poison glands. We can use those to produce other chemicals or to coat crossbow bolts. Uh, what's in that room over there? We're growing mushrooms of different kinds there, of course, most notably the mine shrooms. They're one of the most potent and certainly one of the safest psionic catalysts. The largely popular psi boosters are made from mine shrooms, in case you didn't know. Do you have anything to trade? He stops working, sets the knife aside, and carefully removes his gloves. Of course. Yes, I sells some medicine, some components. Some blueprints. Okay. If it's not stealing. Alright, what's up, Logan? Let's have a chat. Uh, most of the stuff we produce here, we used to feed the we used to feed the animals, but some of it is for our own consumption. Well, thanks, Logan. Tricolizing bolt. Throwing net. Mobilize up to two turns depending on the target's strength. Neat. Just gonna open up all the doors. So I know that I've explored everything. Big Brett! Cave Hoppers? What's up, Big Brett? You must be Brondon. They call me Big Brett. So you pass all the tests I see. Couldn't have been easy. Those were just getting harder and harder in recent years. Uh, they were pretty hard, but I like challenges. You're gonna love it here, then. So it brings you to the pens. Do you have anything to trade? Firing nets and train. Okay, all the stuff that I found over there. Well, with some blueprints. Oh, he's looking to buy eight plants or fungi. Alright, uh, what is this place? Uh, this is the agronomy, agronomy sector where we grow and harvest all kinds of plants. But we also breed animals for food. In short, our job is to provide food to the station in any way possible. Oh, neat. Glad I came down here. Actually, I am, because I found a lot of good loot. Alright, so cave tunnel, exit, and docks. Let's go talk to the guy in the, uh... Let's see what's down here. Let's get it mapped out real quick. Malcolm, what's up, man? The man greets you with a warm smile. Ah, Bron Don. Good to finally meet you. I'm Malcolm. How can I help you? I need to get out into the caves. You didn't get your access card yet, right? Yes. Should be around here somewhere. He starts looking through the drawers. There it is. He produces a red access card and passes it to you. Now listen here. This is the procedure. When you want to leave, you let me know and I'll open the inner gate. Then you step into the transition room, and I close the inner gate, and open the outer gate, and off you go. Alright now, when do you want to get back in? 
or when you want to get back in, use the card I gave you on the console outside. Stand in front of the camera so I can confirm it's you, then I'll open the outer gate. Earlier we used to do bioscanning every time someone passed, but since no one ever showed up positive, it became a nuisance. Uh, what if I do contract a disease? Then be kind enough to inform me so I can activate the turrets. Those ready to pieces will burn the remains and everything's good. He chuckles. Just kidding. Or am I? Alright, so we'll come back here later. Let's go talk to the guy in the engineering sector. Engineering and cyber labs. Ooh. A lot of people. Alright, let's go somewhere else first. We'll come back to this. Ton of people. Okay. Let's start in here. Oh. No time to chat. Uh have to get this done today. Not you, Wayne. Um, if you like watching the arena, me and a couple of guys meet to watch it together. <laughs> What's up, Ezra? That guy looks rough. As he turns around to face you, you immediately notice there is something off with this man. His face is pale and hairless. He's missing one of his eyes, and instead of wires, and instead wires protrude from his eye socket, uh, traveling over the side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck. The other eye is almost colorless, with the pupil so con contracted that you question whether he can even see at all. The pupil so contracted that you question. Okay. He speaks with a calm and even voice. Hello, Brandon. I am Ezra. I act as the head network administrator and chief of the entire engineering sector. Do you have anything to trade? Nice Paxers. Okay. Uh, are you blind, Ezra? Ezra raises his hand slowly and extends it towards you. He holds two of his fingers in front of your face for a moment, each pointing at one of your eyes before retracting the hand. Thanks for answering my question. Uh, what is, what is it exactly that you do here? Me specifically, the cyber department, or the engineering sector? I meant you. I make sure that all parts of the station's internal network are communicating properly and securely and that all the scripts are running as they should. I also oversee all operations of the engineering sector. How about the cyber department? We maintain and improve the station's internal network. We write programs for all automated systems in the station. Uh, what does the engineering sector do in general? We construct, deconstruct, research, upgrade. Listing all the specific things we do would take too much of my would take too much of my time. Go around and talk to people working here. They might be willing to let you know the details of their projects. It's like, can I talk to him now? Oh, he needs more caffeine. Oh, that's too bad, buddy. Because I don't have any on hand. What's up, Gorin? We kind of got this men-only thing going in this corner here. Okay. Yeah. Do you know that this particular model has a built-in taser? It was removed in the later models. Alright, Harold. Howdy, you must be the new guy. Name's Harold. I'm in charge of this little workshop here. Uh, nice to meet you, Harold. I'm Brian Don. So, you looking for something specific, or just looking around? Uh, do you have any stuff to trade? I got plenty. Take a look. Alright, uh, Tanner tells me you know of a way to restore power to the outpost to the north. He nods. Right. I remember taking a look at the power generator there a while back. I couldn't do anything about it back then because I didn't have this. He rummages through the boxes that are on the table before producing something resembling an energy core. Here. It's a flux controller. If you insert it into the slot at the front of the power generator, it should get it running again. After that, you ought to be able to reactivate all the outposts. I'm afraid you'll have to do that manually, though. You see, each of them has a switch that cuts off the power in case of a hazard. 
I uh, got it. Thanks. I'll give it a try. Neat. Now, I do want to go back up top. How far did I go? I might call the episode here, and then, um... Hold on, let me see. I'll remember where this took me. Let me go and speed it all the way up, since... Where did this take me? Is this where I needed to go? This is where this other guy was I was supposed to talk to. Right, Harland. Uh, you come up to a short, bull-necked man, leaning forward, focusing all his attention at one of the monitors before him. On it, you see two dark contours disappearing behind the corner. The man straightens up, almost instantly recoils, as he becomes aware that he is not alone. One quiet moment passes, and he speaks to you. You scared the hell out of me, man. Don't, don't you sneak up like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Alright, but darn. Anyway, I'm Harland. What are you doing down here? Now, where do these tunnels lead? Freaking everywhere. Back when the underrail was, under was built, they used them as, an es as escape routes in case there was a hazard in one of the main tunnels. Or just to be able to quickly access remote parts of the lower underrail. Nowadays, between lurkers and dangerous creatures that skitter about, it's not the safest way to travel around. If you absolutely must go there, best bring night vision goggles. Oh, I need to get into the tunnels. I'm not opening the gates unless it's an, unless it's an emergency. And why not? It's a lurker metropolis out there, and I'm here on my own guarding it because everyone else is working or guarding the metro tunnel upstairs. So unless Gorski or Tanner come down in person to tell me otherwise, this gate is staying closed. Uh, what can you tell me about these lurkers? You don't want to meet those guys, let me tell you that, man. They're a brutal, cannibalistic... cannibalistic gang that lives in these underpassages, and are the primary reason why only the most desperate would use them. I see them on the camera sometimes, and at one time, three of them even tried breaking through the gate. Had they managed it, though, they'd have met that turret over there. But seriously now, lurkers are no joke. Heard stories of them stealing babies and children from smaller settlements and... Horrible stuff, man. Horrible stuff. So he won't open the gate for me, but I can go this way, maybe. That was a little disappointing. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to call the episode here. I guess in the next episode, we'll head down to the uh, the bottom levels. Where does this take me? Custom notes are so important, so you can shift and left-click. That's um, something I think more RPGs need. So, I mean, if you're carrying your own map around, why can't you ride on it? Um, Divinity Original Sin does it. And this game does it. I can't think of any more examples. The original Divinity might do it as well. There's a handful of titles that do it, but not not nearly enough. Anyway, I'm going to call the episode here. Uh, next one, we'll head into the tunnels and try and power the... or restart all the outposts and see how we fare. We don't have any melee weapons, which is kind of our uh, forte right now. I might try and buy one off camera. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.